Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com, and welcome to part four in our five-part series on using the camera in Toon Boom Animate. So what I'm going to do in this lesson, we're going to uh, we're going to move our clouds a little bit so they don't look so well stagnant. And we're also going to set some eases in a little bit of ease in, a little bit of ease out with pretty much the camera moving through the shot just to give it a little more of a dramatic flair. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is when I come down to my sky layer, let's turn off our animate button here and I'm just pretty much going to select right here where it says sky and click and drag this to my library. You want to make sure your library is open and visible. So click and drag this right over. And by doing that, we just created a symbol of the sky. Now, in the timeline, it's still a drawing, but we do have a symbol we can work with. So I'm going to simply double click on the sky symbol. And what I'm going to do now is get my select tool. And I'm going to click and drag to select one of the clouds here. I'm going to copy that, Command C, Control C on PC. Let's add a layer. And we'll call this cloud one. Okay. Now I'm going to paste this. You're going to see something interesting here. Let's do command V and you're wondering where did the cloud go? Well, if I zoom out a little bit, the clouds way up here and it's much larger. So what I'm going to do is simply drag this down and line it up to where it originally was and scale it about to where it was and that's cloud one let's do another drawing layer this is going to be cloud two so I'm going to do this twice here okay now if you notice I had to actually do that twice the reason was I actually was on a different layer um, and by doing it the second time, I just jump to the original layer. So let's go ahead and copy. Command C and Command V and paste it on its new layer. And again, I'm just going to scale this to the size it should be. Put it in about the same position. Looks good. Now I'll select the sky layer again so you can see exactly what I meant. Select in the sky layer, click and drag, and in theory, yes, it grabbed the cloud the first time. So we'll copy, Command C, Control C on PC, add a new drawing layer. Does it matter what order these are in as far as the stacking order and layer order? No. Let's see, cloud three, and we'll paste. Now I could come in and start adding some color to these clouds, but that's not what I want to do right now. Just focusing on a little bit more movement, just a little more of the cake before we decide to start frosting it. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the new cloud layers we just made. Let's go to our original sky layer. I'm leaving the actual outline of the sky alone, but I want to click and drag and select all of those clouds and delete them. Turn back on our visibility of our new separate layers. These are all in just one frame right now. So we'll select frame 60 on all three layers. And let's do F5 to extend that exposure. All right, looks good. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to add in a pivot point. Now, technically, you'd think I'd probably drop the pivot point dead center, and I probably should. Hmm. Yeah, let's not make it confusing. We'll make the uh, pivot point dead center. Now, I'm saying that now, but of course, once we go to start animating these, okay, set that pivot point, go to cloud one, set your pivot point dead center, cloud three, set your pivot point dead center. And again, it doesn't matter what order these are in right now. Once we start to animate these, I am probably going to adjust it a little bit more because I want to have 
like the wind is blowing coming in from the right. Uh, and it's blowing these, which is going to stretch the clouds out and move them in a direction. So I am going to change where I have my pivot point uh, once we start animating. So on each of these layers, each of these layers, let's do shift and select all those. We're going to insert a keyframe, F6. Okay. And we'll turn on our animate button. Make sure none of those are selected. And let's go to the very last frame, frame 60. And for this one, what I'm going to do, and this is what I was talking about, I'm going to move the pivot point right to the end just to stretch the sky out. I want it to stretch from one particular direction. And I also want this to move just a little bit. Okay, so if I play this, that's the type of movement I want. So it's stretching out and moving at the same time. Okay, so we'll do the same thing for our other cloud here. I'm going to move the pivot point right to the end, stretch this out. Right there. And last but not least, we'll do the same thing here. Move the pivot point to the end. I'm going to stretch this out. And because this is actually a little larger cloud, I'm going to also do a little bit. Like it gets actually thicker. So let's play this and see if this works. Now, technically, that last little thickening didn't work. It actually would probably work better if it looked thinner, since it's actually being stretched out. Maybe the same with the other one. So let's do that. Let's go in. And we'll grab this little guy. I'm going to zoom in. Command plus. Command equals technically. So we'll just flatten these out just a little. All right, so if we play this now, let's zoom out. Okay, that looks a little more realistic actually. Okay, so we're done animating our clouds. Let's go back to our top view. Now, if you remember, this is the sky that we see here is still the original drawing. It's not the symbol we just worked on. So I'm going to turn off my animate for a moment here. Uh, so what I want to do, and actually and now I'll show you this. So if I play this, the clouds aren't doing anything. That's still the original drawing. So what I want to do, let's go to the very beginning here. Make sure I can see the, the sky. And I'm going to click and drag the sky from the library, hold down my control key, um, and I'm going to drag the straight to the first frame, let go of the mouse, and I'm getting a paste special. So what I want to do is make sure it pastes all the frames from the movie, um, and I don't want to change anything with the cycles or anything like that. And I'll go ahead and let's do enter. So now if I play this, There are our new clouds. Okay. And you look at the timeline, it actually shows you it's a little, it looks a little different because this is a symbol on the timeline versus it being a drawing. Okay. So we had that part done. That's Zoom in a little bit here so you can see what's happening. All right. Now, 
The next part I want to do is start adjusting exactly how the camera is moving here. All right. Now, if you look at my toolbar, I have a extra little perimeter here so that set ease for multiple perimeters. And what I want to show you is if you do not have this, how do you get it? So I'm going to simply right click. right on the edge of my toolbar here and go to customize. Okay. And so here's where mine is. And I'm going to get rid of that for a moment, put it back where it was. And what you have to do is these are all the available tools. So you're going to scroll down and you find set ease for multiple perimeters. And you add that and you click okay. And so that's where that's coming from. Now, if you're not familiar with what an ease is, think about it this way. If you've got a car, a car does not instantly start at 60 miles per hour. It has to get up to that speed. So it kind of eases in to that. Now, if it's going 60 miles per hour, it's not going to instantly stop either. So it's going to ease out of that. So either the frames are going to be slow at the beginning or slow at the end. Okay. Slow at the beginning as an easing in, slow at the end, easing out. So what we're going to do is do a little bit of work here. I'm going to leave the first few frames alone, but I think what I want to do, because I'm looking at our camera here, the camera peg, and seeing exactly where the keyframes are. So at frame 26, I'm going to add in an ease. So I'm going to click this here. And what I have is this little diagram that shows up. And this is what it means. Um, if I pull this little area here, it basically means this little, this little Bezier curve means this line is closer to frames 26 and 16 than it is to frames six. So it basically means it's going very fast and then it starts to slow down a little bit over the arc here and it really gets slow between frames 16 and 26. It's easing out, okay? So it's very fast at the beginning and then starts to slow down. Now, what we want to do, since it's slowing down at this point, we don't want it to go to a constant speed, which is the way it is right now. From 26 to 56, what we want it to do is kind of still come out, come out of that slow and then speed up. Okay. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and we'll close this. So let's do apply and then we'll close and we'll play this. Now you can see there's, I did something pretty drastic and just trying to show exactly what's happening with the easing. So as it's heading toward the end, it does actually speed up where the camera's going. And that's pretty much it. Now you can go ahead and play around with this a lot more. So let's even add in another set of eases here. So what we can do is Start making it closer there. And then at the very end, I'm going to do something a little weird. Okay, slow at the beginning, speeds up. Slow at 35, speeds back up again. So we'll play and apply that. And there you have it. So you can start playing around with 
the easels or you can just leave it alone but you can have a little more fun and add a little more drama to your shots uh, just by playing with the ease in and out so let's go ahead and deselect a lot of this let's stop our camera for a moment All right, and there you have it. So that is part four of our camera series, our camera movement in Toon Boom Animate. This has been Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. Remember, keep it simple. Make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, rethink the idea. Have a good one.